When I once went hiking in the mountains of the Western Ghats, I came across a lot of species. Like I saw the langur, which is a type of a monkey. I saw the nilgiri tar, and I also saw some kokum trees. This purple frog, however, was very difficult to spot. What I had just witnessed in that hike was a fraction of the biodiversity of the Western Ghats. What is this biodiversity? Biodiversity is nothing but the biological diversity of all organisms on earth. It includes all the animals, the plants, the microorganisms that live on earth currently, all the species that have been identified so far. It has been estimated that there are around 8.7 million species that exist on earth in both land and oceans and there are so many other species that have not been identified so far some that live deep in the trenches of the oceans or in the amazonian rainforest there are so many species that have not been characterized so far but the biodiversity includes all the plants the animals the fungi the bacteria archaea protists that live on both land and water and this is what we're going to be talking about in this video like a lot of things that you have studied so far biodiversity also has some types by which we can characterize it and there are three types of biodiversity is based on the level in which we are characterizing biodiversity if we are starting at the genetic level which we would do if we are looking at a bottom up approach then we'll be talking about genetic diversity or genetic biodiversity if we go up a level at the species level then that gives rise to species biodiversity up another level we come across the ecosystem level which gives rise to ecological biodiversity in this video we'll be exploring the three types of biodiversities as well first we'll start with the genetic level or genetic biodiversity have you gone to a botanical garden where you have seen a lot of species of flowers for example a specific botanical garden might have different varieties of roses like hybrid tea rose the floribunda rose or even the damask now these varieties are cultivars are plants that belong to the same species of rose but they look different phenotypically they look different they have a different color petal the size is different because of the presence of genetic variations they have different genes which express different proteins which gives rise to this genetic biodiversity all these varieties or cultivars are very important in maintaining a variety of genes in the gene pool you can see this variety or cultivars even when we talk about mangoes different types of mangoes like alfonso banganapalli which incidentally is my favorite badami malgowa they all look different they taste different they have a different size because of their genetic differences the existence of this genetic variation is very important because this variation is what gives certain individuals survival advantage over other individuals let's say that a population of mango trees exist in a region and there are different cultivars growing in that region say a disease affects a specific type of a mango plant and because of the presence or absence of certain genes the mango plant is not able to resist the disease and it's not able to survive but there are other cultivars in that area which have certain genes that they are able to resist that infection now the presence of this genetic variation this genetic differences is what helps certain cultivars or varieties stay and survive compared to other individuals the gene variations can be accumulated over the years either through natural selection or even through artificial selection how do you think we got those varieties of rose or mango that we see today it was because of artificial selection or artificial breeding humans they saw which traits they preferred and they continued to grow those traits the plants that contained those traits when we go up one level from genetic biodiversity we get to species biodiversity So when we want to talk about species biodiversity let's start with a simple food chain that i know that really doesn't exist in an area but let's just assume that it exists so there are rabbits that live in a forest and they eat grass or plants whatever they can find in that area in turn the rabbits are eaten by foxes let's say that there is a disease or something happens which causes the population of fox to decrease Now if the population of foxes decreases 
then the population of rabbits is going to increase because there are no predators for these rabbits. Because there is nothing to keep the population of rabbits in check, the population is going to increase. And with more and more rabbits being born, they are just going to eat more and more of this grass and plants. So that would lead to overgrazing or a decrease in the uh, population of the grass or plants. Basically, the food of this rabbits, this is going to decrease. Now, eventually, this is going to affect the rabbit population also because rabbits will not have anything to eat. So this tells you that removing one species from a food chain in an ecosystem is going to have a cascade effect and affect the entire ecosystem. But what if we had a diverse number of predator or prey species? For example, instead of just, you know, foxes eating rabbits, you have other predators for rabbits like cats, dogs, birds or coyotes. In this way, even if the population of fox decreases, you still have other animals, other predators to keep the population of rabbits in check. This is an example of species biodiversity where you have a diverse number of species of prey, predators, plants, etc. that are living in an area, all of which interact together and help keep the ecosystem at a stable level. Because there are other animal species, other predator species to compensate for the removal of one species. And you could explore more, you know, in, instead of just eating rabbits, foxes could eat mice, birds could eat insects, which means that there's more prey for these organisms, for these predators. So even if something were to happen to the rabbit population, they would still have other animals to eat, which would keep their numbers in check. So this is an example of species biodiversity where a diverse number of species is required to keep the ecosystem stable. With this, let's move on to ecological biodiversity. Now, ecosystem is made up of both, you know, biological or biotic and the non-biological or abiotic factors. Abiotic factors could be temperature, wind, rainfall or precipitation, sunlight availability, etc. All those abiotic factors also play a very important role in the formation of an ecosystem. And India is home to several such ecosystems. Let's start with the Western and Eastern Ghats are mountain ranges located on the Western coast and the Eastern coast of India. The Western Ghats has a lot of diverse um, animals and plants like the Indian elephant, the Nilgiri tar and the beautiful Beautiful, beautiful Kurunji flowers. I happened to go to Kodai Canal, which is a hill station during the flowering season of this Kurunji. It was such a beautiful and mesmerizing sight to behold. This flower, which blooms only once in 12 years, was such a magical thing to experience. It is India's most ecologically diverse ecosystem. The Eastern Ghats are not as species diverse as the Western Ghats, but they also have a lot of diverse species like teak and mahogany, jackal and even the Indian tiger species. Another ecosystem that can be found in India is the Sundarbans, which have a lot of mangrove forests. The Sundarbans are named after, of course, the Sundari trees, which are found in plenty in that area. And a lot of tigers, the Bengal tiger. And this coast also contains a lot of dolphins. Amazing, isn't it? So this tells you how diverse the mangrove forests, the Sundarbans are in India. India is also home to the Thar Desert, which again has a lot of its own flora and fauna like cacti, mushrooms, gazelles, eagles, falcons, camels. A lot of species of animals and plants live in the desert. You know, you might think that because of the temperature and the low availability of rainfall, deserts are not ecologically diverse. But in fact, deserts are one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. India is also home to a part of the Himalayas. We cannot forget about the mighty mountains, the Himalayas, which is home to animals like the Himalayan tar, snow leopards, yaks, Himalayan wolves, a lot of deer, and a lot and lot of medicinal plants and, and trees and shrubs that exist all over the Himalayas. 
the andaman and nicobar islands they are surrounded with coral reefs that are home to a lot of fish species a lot of plant species and even the coral species themselves a lot of them are actually endemic to that area they are not found anywhere else in the world a lot of fish like toad fish sea horse angel fish they all live in this coral reefs surrounding the andaman and nicobar islands and see the amount of ecosystems india has there is a desert there is the rain forest there is mangrove forest there is a a temperate region in the himalayas there is the coral reefs just how diverse ecologically india is this tells you how important it is to you know conserve biodiversity a lot of threats exist to biodiversity these days especially from us humans we'll talk more about the threats to biodiversity and why we need to conserve it and how we can conserve it in future videos